uh, as a PC. It's a uh, it's a pure paper, not a stat topic. Okay. All right. We use the formula in it. Okay. All right. Um. Okay. So let's first talk about indices. All right. Okay. So there are several in rules of indices. So for example, you have a m plus n in your uh, m plus n in, is in your uh, power. Yeah. Okay. How do you open this up? You do a to the power m into a to the power n. So the bases remain the same. By bases, I mean a. How do you expand this? You take the same bases. And you multiply them, separating the powers. Understand? Yeah. Yeah. A minus yes. n. So there is a minus in the power. So this would be equated to a m upon a n. So the bases remain the same and they get divided. But this is not equal to a m minus a n. It is. This is not equal to this. Why? Because over here, the power is the a m minus sign is not in the power. Yeah. Yeah. The minus sign has to be in the power for it to be divided. Then we have a m, and then there is a whole bracket to the power n. In this case, the power will become multiplied, so it becomes m n. Yeah. There's an, mm -hmm. other, another example given where you have a m plus n. There's a whole bracket to the power r. So now the bracket, the power will become multiplied with the r. So it becomes a m r plus a n r. How can you further expand this? You can further expand it from the rule one. Yeah, can you see the similarity? So it can further become a m r into a n r. Yeah? Yeah. Then you have a to the power m upon b to the power m. So you take you can you can take the power common, which becomes a upon b to the power m. Then you have a m into b m. So the bases are different now. So what you can do, you can just multiply the bases and take the power common. Yeah. Yeah. Have you written these down? Uh, no, almost, almost done. Let me know once you're done. Okay. Okay, done. Done? Yep. All right. I'm giving you some questions for indices so you can try solving. How would you expand this? Uh, two to the power three into two to the power a. Yes, so it will be two to the power three into two to the power a, which you can further solve eight into two to the power a, yeah? Yeah. All right. Can you try solving this? Yeah. What will you be doing? So it would be three uh, to the power M. No. Yeah. M? A to the power M and N. M and N? You will multiply their power? 
Um, can you can see, see this is basically the opposite of this? So now you're going from here to here. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So it will be what? P to yeah. the power M, M plus, plus N. N. Yeah? Yeah. Try solving this. So we'll take four as common. How do you take four common? Um, like, okay. Tell me step by step. Um, four to the power um, A plus B, but then that's 16. The first step would be to convert this into 4. Yeah. Yeah. So to convert this into 4, this would be 4 squared into B. Yes? Yeah. Yes. Then according to this rule, this one, the third rule. Yeah. Powers become okay. multiplied. Yeah. Okay. So the powers become multiplied. This means 4a into 4 to b. Then according to the four, first rule, it will be a plus 2b. Yeah? Yeah. All right. OK. This would be 5 to the power C minus A. Minus A? Yeah. Yeah. Let me write this as 4a into 5 to the power minus a. 4 into 5 to the power of minus a. Then what? Um, isn't that it? No. Look at the rules again. Yeah. Uh, four a four over five whole to the power a. Yes. So you take the power common. Yes. Yeah. All right. Now I'm giving you some questions to do on your own. All right. Okay. It's important to know indices uh, very well before moving on in this chapter. Okay. All right, let me just write down the questions over here. Did you try doing questions from uh, binomial, the polynomials and everything? Yeah, I did. It's okay if you didn't even, you can take your time. But try to do them so we know you're clear with the topics, all right? 
Yeah, I completed them. Okay, that's great. In fact, there was a question uh, from one of the lessons of partial fractions, which we had to discuss, but um, I guess we forgot about it. You can send me the question. I can okay. have a look at it. All right, I'll send after All that. Right. Yes. So these are 10 questions that you can do for practice.
That's from question seven onward. So what happened? I'm I cannot do from seven onward. All right, are you done with uh, one to six? Yeah. All right, can you check? Only one over x. Yes, one oh, over one x to the power a. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. All right. So tell me, what is the power of under root? If I one want to write two under root, yeah. Yeah. What's so the power? Yeah, this is how you're supposed to solve this also. So it's one over what? Yeah, under root means that there's a two over here. Yeah, yeah, cube root means there's a cube over here. Yeah, why do we put this one? Because the power of two is one. Okay, yeah, and yeah. we put the two because the power of the under root is two. Okay. All right. For example, I have two square uh, or two to the power of four, three cube root. Yeah. How would I write this as a power? First, no. in the numerator, the power of two comes, and in the denominator, the power of the under root sign comes. Right. Similarly, over here. What I can do is, first of all, I can write this as seven squared. Yeah? Yeah. Initially, if I want to write this as a power, the power of the seven will come, which is two, and then the power of the under root sign comes, which is eight. Understand? Yeah. Can you yeah. try solving eight, nine, 10 like this? Okay. Why weren't you able to do eight? Um, I I wrote eight over x eight x g over two. Okay. And over four x square, and then I didn't know um uh, how to go on okay. with that. Okay. If you if the bases are same, the bases are same. Yeah. And they're being Sorry. divided, which means the power will be. Uh, the power will be minus. subtracted, yeah? yeah. This is four ones are four twos are. So power will be subtracted to two x three upon two minus two. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Do you understand? Yeah. What is three upon two minus two? Um minus half. Minus yeah. So how can you write this as? Two upon x to the power half. You need to uh, bring it in a form where there is uh, everything is simplified. All right. All right. Got it. Try doing a nine and ten now. Okay. Nine, there are no uh, variables, so we'll, we'll just calculate eight to the power five over three. So, how will we do? 
Yes, we calculate a to the power five over three. But how can we write this? Can I write this as okay. a to the power five cube root? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Then yeah. you can solve it also. Okay. Now answer will be twenty-two. Twenty-two. Yes. 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 But this is a step that you will need to do to get mark. Okay. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Understood. The last is sixty-four. Um, to the power a over b. Sixty-four to the power a over b. Can yeah. we not further simplify it to be? A to the power two a. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We need to simplify yeah. it as much as you can. Okay. So a to the power two a upon b. Understand? Yes. Let's do some more questions so we can have a better understanding. When is your school starting, um, Anusha? Um, twenty-seven August. Around All right. Then. Just give me a minute. I'm getting your questions.
for question 11. I simplified it. Um, yeah. I've simplified it and I got x cubed over 3x to the power 10 and y to the power 5 over 2y cubed. Let's so, take it once you're done with all three questions. Are you done with all three? No. Okay, try to do all three and then we'll check. All right, okay. I'm done. Hello. Yes. Yeah, I'm done. All right. So this could be five ones up, five twos up, four ones up, four threes up. Yeah? Yeah. Three minus 10 would give me X minus seven. Yeah? Yeah. Five minus three would give me Y squared upon Two and two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Y yeah. squared upon six x seven. Did you get this? Okay. No, I didn't uh, multiply it after this. All right. What did you okay. get for question twelve? Yes, I got eight to the power three y over x. 3y over x, all right. So we know that cube root of five, uh, eight cube is five one two, yeah? Yeah. This would be multiplied by x. Okay, yeah. Did you do this? No. Where did your three go then? Uh, I took it inside. I I did eight to the power three y. No, I didn't write no. it with x. You can't do eight to the power three y. You will multiply it with this power. Or what you can do is to avoid confusion. Let me tell you something else. Wait. First, what you can do is you can solve the inner bracket. All right. So you know that five and two is eight cubed, so it would be three y. Yeah. Then what you can do is you can write this as a power. So it would be three y upon x 
cubed. Then you can simply just multiply the power. So it will be three threes as nine upon x. You understand? Okay, yeah. What did you get for this question? This two, I didn't uh, do it after simplifying. Okay, so can you try to 11. make the bases the same? Yeah. So it would be five x, five squared x squared, yeah? Yeah. Into five x cubed. upon five cube to the x five, yes? Yeah. Can I add it like this? Yes. Now the bases are the same. Now you will apply Bordmas, all right? According to, you know what Bordmas is? Yeah. According to Bordmas, do you divide first or multiply first? Divide. You divide and then you multiply, all right? So yeah. make sure you follow this. So what you do is the bases are the same for five, yes? Yeah. So first you divide. So what you can do is, you can divide first, but you don't need to use Podmas. What you can do is, you can simply solve the numerator first and divide it with the denominator, all right? All right. So five square into five would give you five and you will add the powers. Yeah, this is what we did over here in the first rule. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. When it's the bases are the same, we add the powers. Mm, yeah. Okay. And we have five cube and then human denominator. Again, the bases are the same in X. Yeah. Yeah. So first we can add the powers. So X two plus three upon x5. Okay. So five cube upon five cube would give me one. And x to the power five, x to the power five would again give me one. So this would be your answer. You understand? Yes. Are you clear in here? Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. Now let's can move on to the, Can I see the answer to question 12? Yes, yes, yes. Nine y over x shouldn't it be twenty seven y over x? Can you speak louder? I can't hear you. Um, the answer you wrote is x uh, eight to the power nine y over x shouldn't it be yes twenty seven y over x because it's cube. So whenever you tell me, whenever we have a m to the power n, powers okay, become multiplied. That. Yep. So three yep. will be multiplied with three. Okay, got it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Let's move on to exponential functions. Now we will be looking at uh, the curve for exponential. All right. Do you know what exponential means? I think so. What does it mean? Um. I, I don't know. Exponential, have you seen E in your calculator? Mm. Yeah? Yeah. Have you ever used E? No. No. So this E is basically the exponential. Okay. All right. Yeah. E stands for exponential. Whenever we write E, do you know what pi is? Uh, sorry, what? Pi, pi. Yeah. Pi has some value, yes? Yeah. E is very similar to pi. E also okay. has some value. Can you just put E in your calculator to the power one? Okay, I got 2.718. Yes, this is the value of E. So now okay. we'll be talking about this E. This whole chapter is regarding this E, all right? Okay. 
Okay. So let's look. Now this E has some curves. All right. Let's talk about these curves first. So the exponential function for E x. All right. A positive value E x. All right. The power is positive. So for this, the shape of the curve is like this. It go. It starts from the x-axis from the left side. It goes up. And it keeps going up. It's an infinite function. Now there are two things you need to remember. All right. Firstly, yeah. this never stops. Okay. It goes up to infinity. Right. Yeah. Second thing you need to know is this is the first thing. The second thing you need to know is. This line will never touch the x-axis. It will come very close to the x-axis, but it will never touch the x-axis. It's called an asymptote. Have you ever heard of it? Yeah. It's called it called an asymptote. Why? Because it never touches the x-axis. All right. Yeah. Okay. So this is the graph for e x. All right. Let's okay. talk. This is the what you have to see. This is a positive x value. All right. Okay. Let's talk about e minus x. So now what you're looking at, there is a negative in the power. All right. Okay. So whenever there is a negative in the power, what happens? It's a reflection in the y-axis. What does a reflection in the y-axis mean? Let's look over here. So reflection in the y-axis basically means you're keeping a mirror in the y-axis and reflecting it. All right. Okay. So whenever there is a negative power, it is a reflection in the y-axis. So okay. uh, this means that initially our ex graph was starting from left. Now this will start from the right, and it will go up and. Keep going up. What we did is basically this is the graph for e x. Yeah. 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 Yes. We kept a, a mirror over here in the y axis and reflected it. Okay. So this part comes over here. This part reflects over here. And this part reflects over here. Do you see? Yeah. What another thing that you need to remember is it crosses the y axis at zero one. All right. This is the third thing you need to remember. It crosses the y axis at zero one. All right. Okay. Okay. Understand? Okay. And now we talked about, about this. Yes, it will always cross over here okay. as long as it is e x. Right. You know, while we're talking about this, this can also be this is for all exponentials. All right, it will not only work for e. Even if they give you a graph for y is equal to two x, this would be the same graph. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Or y is equal to three x. As long as there is a power, it will be the same graph. All right. Okay. If it's a positive power, this would be the shape. If there's a negative power, it will reflect in the y-axis. Understand? Yes. Okay. Let's look at the third graph. So now we have a graph for y is equal to minus e to the power x. Now there is a negative function. There's a negative in the function. The e itself is negative. The power is not negative. All right. So when this happens, it becomes a reflection in the x-axis. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let me just write this down. All right. What does this mean now? Initially, my curve was like this. Yeah. Yeah.
All right. So initially your curve was like this, where you have, yeah, EX is like this. Yeah. Now the basic EX curve is negative. So it reflects in the X axis. So you keep your mirror in the X axis now. Okay. All right. When yeah. you keep your mirror in the X axis, this part reflects over here and this part reflects over here. So where it crosses the X, X, uh, Y axis, that also changes to from one zero to zero minus one. <clears throat> Understand? Yes. Are you clear till here? Yeah. First it was crossing over here as zero one. Now it crosses at zero minus one. Okay? Yeah. There are four yeah. basic graphs that you need to know. Other than that, you will be able to manipulate them. Okay. The fourth graph is this. Y is equal to E minus E minus X. So we talked about E minus S, X. We talked about E minus E X. Now we're talking about minus E minus X. All right. Okay. Now let's interpret this first. So we can see initially that this minus means it's a reflection in the x-axis. Yeah. Yeah, because there's a fun minus in the function. Yeah. Now what is the reflection of? It's a reflection of e minus x graph. It's not a reflection of my e x, it's a reflection of e minus x. So where is e minus x? This is my e minus x graph. Okay. Can you see? Yeah. The shape was like this. Now this is being reflected. Yeah, Understand? Okay. Yeah. Does it make sense? Yes, it does. Okay. All right. I'm sure you have done trigonometric graphs. Yeah. Yeah, so you must know how we manipulate these graphs when there is a uh, change in the magnitude or there's a plus or minus sign. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Actually, let's stop over here today. Uh, we will be having our next class where we will be discussing all the uh, modifications in these graphs. All right. I feel like if I give you more information on these graphs, you'll get a little confused. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to go through these graphs and I'll give you some questions for indices as homework. All right. In the next right. class, what we'll do is we'll talk about all the modifications in these graphs. All right. Okay. Got it. All right. Yes. Okay. Does that sound okay with you? Yes, it does. I'm fine with it. Okay. All right. Let me just stop the recording. <laughs>